Um, my name is Adrian, and I'm here today with Rob, and we are talking about creating a community organizing community organizing using Google+. So thank you, Rob, so much for taking the time to talk to me. Okay. Well, well, first of all, before I say anything else, I'm I'm like <laughs> I'm totally flattered for this opportunity. I think I mentioned to you offline. This is the first time I've been interviewed in my life, and I'm I'm way north of fifty now. <laughs> so I, this is kind of a <laughs> this is kind of a treat. So so thank you for that. So uh, so fire away. Ask me whatever you want to ask me. Yeah. Well, I know, you know, and I'll tell you a little bit. I like I said, I don't, I'm not sure how I found your community of entrepreneurs on Google+. Plus. Um, but I stumbled upon it one day, and I was taking a look around, and there was so much information. There were so many people. There was so much content being shared. And what struck me is, as I compared it to the other communities, it seemed to be very well moderated. It seemed to have a certainly a defined structure. You know, there were clear directions on where you put things and introduce yourself and what to do and what not to do and read this first. And it it kind of it's the structure for a really great environment where people are coming and they're sharing great information. Um, and so I wanted to reach out to you and I'm really I I'm I'm excited that you said yes because I was really just kind of reaching out to you to say, hey, can I ask you a few questions? So this interview evolved that way, and it's exciting. We'll we'll see where this goes. But um, <laughs> okay, okay, thanks so much. And as I warned you, I, I can ramble on forever. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so tell me to shut up if I start doing that. But, but first, first of all, you you asked um, you asked how it got started. Um, first, I bombed out on Facebook. I, I got into Facebook late in the game, and then I let it read my email, and I got this psychotic mix of baby pictures and political rants, and it just wasn't what I wanted out of a social network. So, you know, when I, um, I first joined Google Buzz, and I, I made that kind of my, um, my everything network, where I just posted whatever I wanted. Um, and then, um, then Google Plus came around, and I realized I wanted to connect more with um, fellow small business entrepreneurs. I have become fascinated with the number of solopreneurs in this country. Mm -hmm. There are a massive amount of them. They're not politically represented. Um, most of them are working alone. Um, and you might have seen some of my political rants. There's like 100 million people in America who have fallen out of the workforce. So what I did is I started setting up um, a set of shared circles. And they had the same name as the entrepreneurs community. It was called um, entrepreneurs, self-employed, and small business. And some of those just ended up getting massively reshared. And that really helped the entrepreneurial community on Google Plus get much more interconnected. And then when I saw that they had launched these new communities, um, I basically said, well, this, this is the opportunity. I've already got all these alert circles set up. I can set, send people out. So like overnight, we, got, we had 1,000 members. And that kind of became almost the de facto group for entrepreneurs on okay. Google Plus. Have a question or should I keep you rambling? No, you know what, and I, I should say this, I really am interested in your answers, so I'm taking notes as you're talking. So there might be some awkward pauses as I'm scribbling to catch this. So um, so I, I understand you, it sounds like you just basically had a curiosity about the commonalities between entrepreneurs, who was on here, you know, bringing people together. But what made you really want to create this? Oh, sure, sure. It was, it was more than a curiosity, Adrian, okay. because what, you know, I, I fell out of the workforce like more than a decade ago, and I never found my way back to it. So, so in a way, I'm kind of what, what you might call an involuntary entrepreneur, um, and there's a lot of us. And that doesn't mean we're not passionate about what we do. It just means corporate America doesn't want us anymore. Yeah. Um, so, so what I did is I, I've always had kind of a rough time finding partners and people to work with, and I still don't know why that is. Um, but I, I've even gone as far as organizing meetup events in my own town, you know, in San Diego. I live near the beach, which is kind of nice. Uh, meeting in coffee shops. And I've seen people walk off with partners of their own. And I didn't get one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Somebody out there, like me, be my partner. Um, so, so anyway, I also read this book, and I'm not going to remember the author, but it was called, um, I think it was called Making Things Happen, the author of Denicott or something like that. And they talked about um, 
one, one little anecdote in that story got to me, and it was um, there was a guy who I think he was a filmmaker, and he was a very wealthy man, and he had a lot of different ventures. And then the book made the point that creative people always have, like, you know, dozens of little unfinished ventures on the table. So the whole book was about to tackle that. So they talked about this wealthy filmmaker, and he um, would never start a new venture unless he had a co-founder for it. Now, he could afford to pay for whatever talent he wanted, but he thought that having some kind of equal partner in, in starting a new venture was so important that even projects that were really important to him, he wouldn't start uh, a new project until he had that going. So it was kind of a New Year's resolution of mine, Rob, find some people to work with. So that's kind of, you know, in a nutshell, what's driving me. <clears throat> and it's kind of taken on a life of its own. But I, I think we need, to, we need to find ways to work together. And we're, I mean, uh, solopreneurs, we're all independent minded, but we're wasting a lot of time. And if we can just keep exploring and keep trying, different cooperative systems, I think we'll all benefit from it. Okay. Yeah, that, that's great. So it, it sounds like you kind of explored the traditional ways that entrepreneurs network with each other and it wasn't really working for you. Um, and I, I have my own you know, ideas about what works and what doesn't with entrepreneurs and networking. Um, but I love the one of the most attractive things about this community is that it really is casual conversations about really interesting things as they pertain to entrepreneurs. You know, and I love working with entrepreneurs because regardless of what your business is, if you really love what you're doing, you're you're almost completely obsessed with it. And so it's like you want to talk about stuff that's interesting about this thing that's interesting to you. And so your community is a bunch of people who are really interested in how to make businesses work. Um, and so it's, it's an idea, it's a concept of structuring these communities. I'm really curious about the time and energy that it takes. Um, you, you told me a little bit about the startup, but the maintaining it. You know, yeah, how, how much time and energy is, are you It, it really it? has been a challenge. And like I say, after, after I started it, we, we realized that spam was a big problem. Um, right away. I mean, I realized that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Google, in some ways, set up communities to, in a way that's not really logical. Uh, they kind of compete with each other. Uh, Google's not an interest-based system. But we wanted to make the best of what we had. I, I kind of joke. I say we go to war with the, the social network we, we have, not the one we want. Right. So we, we had to make uh, take advantage of its best features and its worst. Um, and right away it was obvious that it was going to need moderation because there's not only um, spam, lots of it, uh, there's also low quality posts, there's people that are a little bit selfish, they just want to post from their own blog and that kind of thing, and it, it's really overwhelming. I, I asked my moderators recently, and just in the last few days, to, you know what, start tallying this, and we found out that we, we moderate over 70% of the posts there. We removed like 70, 80 posts a day, that's a lot. It's a lot of work. Um, so I'm going to do some systems to address that because I think the, the, my moderators will get burned out. But you, you said the word community, and I want to point something out. that um, That's Google's word. Just because Google calls something an online community doesn't really mean it is. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make it a, uh, an online community. I, I think we're maybe halfway there. But, but I wouldn't say we're there yet, but I think we're getting there. And um, I have been critical about Google in a number of ways, a number of ways they've structured things. But one thing you've never heard me criticize Google about, well, maybe just a little, <laughs> is, is their Hangout technology. I, I not only think they have a game changer with what you and I are doing here. We're on completely different co coasts. Yeah. And we're talking to each other as if we're in the same room. I think they not only have a game changer, I think they have a world changer. And you know, if we start using this Hangout technology more effectively, we'll start getting to know each other as people. We'll know our strengths and weaknesses, and it will be to everybody's benefit. Oh, no, I absolutely think you're right. I, when I heard that Google was launching this Hangout community in Google+, it was very exciting, because like I said, I, I'm a virtual coach, so I was 
I was transitioning to a virtual coach, so I was, you know, sitting in my office waiting for people to show up, you know, was not working for me, you know, and I was on Skype, and I was on um, the telephone, and now this allows me to really integrate a whole bunch of other things that I'm doing. It's not just my business. Um, so Google Plus works really well for me. Um, where are you finding, where did you find your moderators? How did this evolve and how many do you have? What are they doing for oh, you? We, it, it, it would be easier to get a job in the CIA <laughs> than it is to get a job as one of our moderators. Yeah. We, we, we scream okay. the crap out of them. I started with Re Rebecca Quinn. I just, um, I, I think I've got a good eye for talent, first of all. Um, Rebecca Quinn, um, she's a small business um, consultant in the Los Angeles area. She's very well connected there. And I just noticed her posts, she didn't make a lot of posts, but you know, just some thoughtful posts. That, I don't even remember what it was, but she shared something irreverent that I posted, and I, I do post a lot of edgy material on my own profile. And then I realized, well, she's more multidimensional. And then from there, we just kind of, she's a world-class observer. We just started observing who was behaving in what way, who was contributing, um, and then, um, then we would ask them, and I did a consensus approach. I started asking the other moderators, how do you like this person, until we had a, uh, you know, a consensus base, and then we'd add somebody, make sure we introduced them to everybody, and it, you know, it's been working pretty well. I think we've reached the, the, the point now where um, adding more moderators is um, not going to be helpful because it will go from being, you know, a team I manage to kind of being a community in its own right. And that, that I don't think, because we have a private community that manages the larger community. And I, I, I think that could create some different problems. I'm going to propose to my moderator, and this is, I don't know if I should say this because I haven't told them yet. I'm going to propose that if they want to take sabbaticals, <clears throat> you know, take a few months off. Right. and then come back, they can do that. And then we can cycle in, because we've got a number of really good contributors, people that are, we call them power, you know, power yeah. members, and you know, people like you, they're just contributing to the community a lot and making but, it a positive place to learn. I'm, I'm curious, I mean, like, how long have you been a part of this, you know, how, how long has this community been around? How many, I mean, where did these moderators come from and about how many of you guys are in this private community that is managing this larger community? Um, there, there's seven of us and, and the, the community itself started the day Google launched communities. How, I, okay. I'm not good with time. Was that yeah. six okay. months ago? How, how long ago was that, do you know? I, you know what, I wasn't even paying that close attention. Yeah, I wasn't either. It seems like six months by maybe Laid right. off by that. Um, so where they came from is from the community itself. Okay. Um, wh when we started, um, you know, people were um, contacting me and saying they wanted to be moderators, and I actually had people attack me because it was just Rebecca and I at first, and people said, "Oh, you think you can moderate? You know, just this community with the two of you, and you know, you're just a jerk." <laughs> you horse. built this. How dare yeah. you? Yeah. You and they, you know, I was getting pretty harshly attacked, but I wanted to take my time. Yeah. And there were people be people that contacted us, and um, you know, one guy in particular. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but um, you know, I almost accepted him. And um, then Rebecca pointed out, well, he hasn't really contributed that much, and he might just want to kind of build his resume. She says, let's just keep an eye on him. And he never did make another comment on the post, right. you know. So she's kept me from some mistakes. Um, but it's you know, I will lie to you. It has been a challenge, and. Um, you know, you asked about building your own community. Um, except for a little bit of prestige, there's not that much benefit that accrues to you as the community owner. I, I've, I'm going to take. Why I'm talking to you because <laughs> this looks you, like a lot of fun, but let me find out what it's really. You know. Yeah, there, there's not that. There's not that much that I can do that you can't do. You've got access to all. You know, the entire members list. You can say whatever you want. You're probably more free to say what you want. Than I am because I say something you know harsh, everybody will get mad at me. Um, so it, it's you know other than prestige, and I, I'd ask that I have those links on, on the side, so I get a little bit of SEO benefit. But other than that, it's just kind of a, a community thing. Now I am meeting awesome people, you know, like you, and so I mean I'm I'm probably understating the benefit. There is benefit, but you know anybody can get almost the same benefit without without having one. Well, and, and I, that's why I'm curious because, you know, there are, 
greater benefits than just, you know, people are like, I'm finding clients. I'm like, no, there, there, there's so many other benefits to communities like this. So I'm really curious about the balance between actually, and I, there's, I'll just speak fully, actually doing your job and working on your business and stuff and getting into this community where it's like interesting for interesting sake. How are you balancing, what are you doing to keep this community alive, but then this community is not your your business? Yeah, I, I'm not sure if I do balance it very well. And I, I've actually, you know, Google Plus is a time sink. <laughs> well, yes, yes. You know, let, let's all let's all admit that. And yeah. Google is designed is not designed to be efficient. Google Plus is not designed to be efficient. It's designed to be sticky. It's okay. designed to keep you there. And I'm well aware of that. I'm constantly putting in new procedures for myself to make, try to make it more efficient. But as far as how much time I can spend, I, I don't know if I can even estimate that. But, but I will say that it's not like I can say, okay, Rob, um, you, you're going to spend um, no more than a half hour a day on this. It doesn't work that way because right. things come up that you have to, you have to jump in. The, the moderators I have are really great. And they can handle 95% of the situations. But there's that 5% that where I see something, and they might not even see it, um, that I think affects the, the health of the community. Um, there was a naysayer that came in the other day. Um, and I was probably a little bit harsh with that person. But I know how much damage naysayers can do. For example, if somebody has a new business idea, um, you know, somebody will right away come in and say, well, somebody's done that before, blah, blah, blah. That's not that great of an idea. Well, they can kill a new idea in its crib. And I, I don't want that to do that, that to happen. So I, I tend to come down a little bit hard on that, a little bit hard on um, when any, and this might be a little bit personal, when everybody's, anyone's trying to set up a cooperative system, I know how hard that is to do. So um, I, I might come down a little bit hard when people, you know, you know, there's such a thing as healthy skepticism, and that's fine, and, and we need that. Yes. But there's also a thing that's kind of just being overly negative on new ideas. So, you know, those are something I might, you know, make my opinion on. on. And the other thing, I mean, this is kind of a minor one, um, but um, I saw somebody posted a picture of herself the other day. It was a nice picture, but she wasn't smiling. Somebody came on and said, oh, you should smile in your picture. Well, I kind of think critiquing pictures is a little off limit. <laughs> I, I'm, not a very, I'm not a very photogenic person myself. Yeah. And it, take, it takes a little bit of um, courage to post your own picture. So if somebody, maybe that person is even, even is a good looking person, if they see it as their role to critique a picture, I just think, I think you know, yeah, that's a little. No, don't do that. You know, yeah, <laughs> so like, do that. smile on camera. Yeah, smile. I've heard people say smile is a hostile thing. Not everybody has a natural smile. I mean, well, you know, I don't. You know, it, 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 you get into some very touchy territory when you start telling women to smile in their picture. Or, you know, it's it's not a good place to be. Yeah, I've also heard the camera that that. When you um, consciously think about a smile, it actually uses a di different neural pathway. And that's why the camera can detect fake smiles so easily. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, that's kind of <laughs> like I said, I can ramble on all topics. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. No, you're you're absolutely right. It's why um, you know I I was a psych major, uh, and so they were always telling you that um, a, if you smile in a genuine smile, and they use it in sales training and stuff like that. When you smile, a genuine smile, you know, going on even when you're talking on the phone. You know, energetically, that transfers. People can feel it; they can hear it without even understanding that that's what they're seeing. So, yeah. Um, so, back to the topic. Which, you know, this is not good. We have two two people who just like to wander trying to interview. Um, so, your the community is really about finding people to work with. So, how are you and your moderators helping yourselves and other people find people to work with? Well, that, that, that's a tough one because, you know, I, I mentioned the, um, you know, that, that everybody has access to the same information that we do, and you do. If you go to, like, the, um, uh, the members list, you'll have access to, to, to all, 
you know, the information on all our members, but Google has made it tough to get that information in a useful format. Um, I would like to know everybody in a certain industry, for example. I would like to know everybody in my city in a certain industry. It's not set up for it. I kind of have my own conspiracy theory that they don't want it to be. Um, but, um, you know, to answer your question, how are we doing that? Um, you asked a bunch of questions. You asked, how am I doing it for myself? And how am I doing it, um, you know, for, um, for, for other people? For myself, I have a content management or content uh, creation practice I've started. And we have a new category there where people can actually post offers. And I posted a few of my own offers. I didn't take any special license. Anybody can do that. I got some business from that. So there is, you know, and, and good, good to really, really cool customers. So that was fun. Um, the, um, you asked earlier about um, the Hangouts we're doing, um, the Let's Talk About series. Mm -hmm. So that's a way. I just, I just want us to get to know each other as people. Um, you know, and once that happens, you know, I, I think it will happen much more naturally. What, what people say a lot about these, you know, um, these communities, with everybody trying to sell to you and, and sometimes talk over each other, it just doesn't work. What, what, what can happen, probably no, it's probably going to be rare that somebody buys something from you directly from the, um, the community. But what will be less rare is that somebody who somebody knows <laughs> will buy your services. Right. I learned in our discussion we had before this, I learned more about your coaching practice, for example, and it sounds fascinating. I'm sure I'm going to talk to you offline about it. So that's, I think, how business really happens. Did I answer your question, or did I just ramble on too much? Well, yes and yes, <laughs> which is fine <laughs> with me. <laughs> no, that's, it is, this is great, because um, I'm, I'm really curious about Part of my fascination is is people who like helping people are are really kind of motivated to do interesting things for other people, and so it's interesting. I asked you directly, you know, what is what is happening for you and the moderators? You know, how are you guys finding people to work with? I'm sorry, I hear a cicada outside my window. That's cool. like, well, like, ah, like, ah. <laughs> they, they said they weren't coming. <laughs> um. Um. I completely lost my train of thought. He well, you asked like, about right a, a, a cooperative, uh, about you know how people right. how, how you and the moderators, because a lot of times this is fun to do. You know, I'm on a lot of different social medias. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. There's really not a whole lot to do with business. It's just it's fun. So I'm on there connecting with people because it's fun. Business falls out of it sometimes, but that's not my direct reason for being there. Um, but then certainly as a business owner. I don't want to spend a lot of my time doing things that are not, that are not moving towards business at all. You know, I I can imagine the time and the energy it takes to put this keep this community together is time that you could be working on your own business. So I was curious, in a long-winded way, to figure out, you know, you and the moderators, how are you finding people to work with? You've got the the offers, the coffee chats that you're doing, you know, how are the other ways that you are bringing this community together and finding people to work with? Yeah, I, I can't speak for, um, for the other moderators. Everybody has their own technique. Um, and, and some people are, are very good at, at being opportunistic. And when they see something, they just leap in and go for it. And, and that's good. I, I, I mean, that's fine. I would like to be more that way myself. Um, it is... It is a challenge, Adrian. I don't know if I have a good answer to this one because I don't know that I, I almost half think that I'd be doing a better job of this if I wasn't the community organizer, to tell you the truth. Because it would allow me, you know, I, I spend a lot of time just on managing the community as opposed to, you know, looking out for number one. And by all, by all admission, I should be doing that. So, I mean, I guess how do I find people? I guess I just, you know, I'm attracted to people who do like to help other people. Lori Varga is a good example. She made a comment on, um, on the community, I believe this morning, about, um, you know, how she enjoys helping other people and how she learns from helping other people. And so, you know, it's not all downside to helping other people. And so I keep, I, I love people like that. I can tell, this is a stereotype, but let me, let me 
tell you something that I think I'm I'm community organizing because I I have a I have a bunch of private communities sub semi private communities where we're trying to do do certain things, but in general, and this is really a stereotype. There's going to be, I think, four kinds of people. I might do a Rick Perry here and forget the fourth one. <laughs> um, but, but you're gonna you're gonna have um, people who will volunteer in a cooperative spirit and will take the initiative. They are pure gold. Um, you know, you those are the kind of people you want. Even if they do the wrong thing, sometimes that's better. Um, the second kind of people, um, they want to help, but they don't know what to do. And I recently read a book about leadership. It was, I'm not going to remember the name. Oh, it was called um, Switch, How to Change When Change is Hard. Have you ever heard of that book? No, I've not heard well, of that. Way excellent book. And it sounds like it would be about some touchy-feely stuff. But they really made the, and it wasn't. It was really about a different kind of leadership. They made the point that a good deal of leadership is just giving good instructions. You have to point the way. And they also made the point about what they called finding the bright spot. You don't always know what's going to work, but sometimes if you look at if there's a really, really tiny thing that's working, you double down on that. So that's another kind of pe person. Um, the person who really sincerely wants to help, they just don't know what to do. You have to help them. A third kind of person is the, um, and this, this is a hard one to deal with, is um, a person who would join just because joining is so easy, it takes. There's no downside to joining certain things. Okay. You don't have to do anything, and they can jump in then when they see a benefit to themselves, and maybe they still want to help. Um, okay. You know, but they they're kind of like, if it's both well, good benefit to myself, and I can help, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. And then there's another kind of person um, where they're mostly joining for benefit to themselves. They might go through the motions of, of helping people a little bit, but that's their primary orientation of you know of, of doing something for themselves and maybe occasionally doing something easy for the group. Um, what I have found is there is no way to tell in advance no. what <laughs> those four people fall, fall into. So it's a it's a challenge. It's a challenge. I don't have the answer if you. I'd like to use your coaching services, maybe. Get some advice on that. Well, you know, I, you, I, and I think the simplest answer is you, it's kind of a you see it and you go with your intuition. You know, you just some people are, some people aren't. Some people surprise you. You're right. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, yeah. You know, yeah. And, and in a good way and in a bad way. Yeah. You know? By the way, you know, you've been asking about moderation a lot. Um, Google has set it up so there's a one-click button where you ban people, you kick them off the community. And and you um, you delete their posts all with a, a single click, and wow. I, I just thought that was too hostile. Wow. Um, and they didn't Google didn't even give us another option. We used to be able to just remove them, and then that would be kind of a shot across the bow. Um, but now it's just like you're out of here, dude. And that just was too harsh for me. What we did find with moderating, and all the moderators have done this, is try to try to tell them on occasion, you know, you know. Hey, here's why we didn't like your post, and we'll either remove that or even leave it there. Right. A lot of them have come back and just been great, you know. So you can never tell, you know. Making yeah. the assumption someone's a jerk right off the bat doesn't work. And I, and I guess you really kind of hit on what is so um, intriguing about this community is that you have some very defined boundaries about what's acceptable and what's not, and yet you don't immediately come at people as if they're trying to violate these rules. And there's been this, this, I've seen these interactions where you're just like, you know, hey, you know, <laughs> we need to let you know this is not okay, you know. Me. I even think I read something in one of the posts where someone was making some helpful suggestions on how this person could um, rewrite a post so that it was useful to the community. Um, and I think that's so important, particularly in, in a space like this that's evolving and is new um, because there are so many people who are not on Google Plus because they're afraid of the technology, they're, you know, it, they think it's Facebook, you know, they, and so having that, those, the structure and the boundaries, but then that welcoming spirit where you're also teaching people is extremely helpful. Yeah, and it, it's been a challenge to set up those mo mo moderation guidelines, and they're, they're still controversial in some ways. The thing about um, Making posting from your own blog um, 
we had one guy that, you know, opinions differ, but I thought he was abusing it. Um, and, you know, there was just some difference of opinions among the moderators. Then one of our moderators, Vishnu, said, you know, if this was my community, I wouldn't allow people to post from their own blog at all. That would be completely banned. I, I don't agree with that because, by definition, um, you know, if you've written something to your blog, you do like it. But I, I really valued that perspective and learning that perspective. Yeah. And, and recently I looked at, I mean, just like yesterday, I looked at all of the other business communities on Google Plus because I, I was told in a comment on a post I made that, you know, Rob, I think it will be almost impossible to build a business community on Google Plus. You're going to get flooded with every kind of MLM scam and every thing in between. Right. And the person that I kind of had to agree with this. So I, I looked at all all the other communities, a bunch of them, all the other big ones. We're, I think we're one of the biggest. I, Robert Scoble has one that's, we're 5,000 members behind him, and I think we will be forever. But I, I looked at all of them, and they all have different rules for moderation. Some of them don't allow posting from your own blogs. Some of them don't, and we do. Some of them don't allow any posting of links and comments, and we do. They all had different approaches, but what I noticed is none of them really had engaging conversations like we do. So in that regards, I think we might be doing something right. Okay. So, um, because I also, as I don't know how to use a lot of the technology that's on Google, you know, and I was using it really strictly to connect with clients, and then offline I'm, you know, searching through these, the, the timeline and things like that. So I'm learning how to do that. And what's interesting to me is um, when I connected with your community, you were having this on-air hangout. That is the hangout with a bunch of people that are actually on live and talking to you and having conversations with each other, but then there was this ability for the rest of us to watch it and to comment. So interacting in the chat room setting, is, is that a feature that is regularly available? If I wanted, you know, how does that, how does that work? Yeah, it, it, it's available now. And boy, it's not trivial to learn <laughs> those hangouts. It took me a long time to learn. I think I was really dense on okay. learning it. Maybe, yeah. you know. As you get older, things get harder to learn or something. But, um, but you, what I do is um, when you plan something to, through the events, um, Google has a bunch of things that just will trip you up. Mm -hmm. so, so what we do is you do something for through, you, you can schedule your, um, your Hangout through the event, and you can do that through the communities or on your own if you want, prefer. Um, but you don't do don't select any of the hangout options that Google has. Pretend it's a real world event. Pretend you're just organizing a picnic, <laughs> okay. and, and and then so you, that's just like an event that just not, um, notifies people, and then um, people are going to subscribe to that. And so then from that point, you have to set up a bunch of circles. All the people that said yes, I'm coming, go in one circle. And then the maybes will go in another circle. And then you have to have still another circle of people you talk to, maybe even on the telephone. But people, you say, you're coming to this, right? You're one of the speakers. So you should get, try to get two or three of them. So then you actually launch your um, community empty before you even start. Um, and then there's going to be a link. You'll see at the top. I'm actually working up a procedure document for this, where you take the, um, a URL link for your YouTube, and then you copy it over to the events page, and that's buried in menus. And if you did this live with people on it, it would just be a nightmare. But you're doing it alone at this point. So then you copy that link over. Then people can watch it from that events page. Um, then you invite those first three people. And you get them, and you have a pre-discussion. Then you invite the people who are SVP. You'll be lucky if half of them come. Um, so then you might still not be filled up. So then you invite the next wave. You know, then you're talking to people a little bit. The, t the clock is ticking. Um, then you invite the next wave. And you might even have a larger circle, as I do, of people you've hung out with in the past who like doing them. And then they get the last one, if they ha even if they haven't RSVP. You asked about the chat. No, that's not something I did. That's something Google set up. So if you had an invitation at all, I believe you can get involved in that chat. But it's hard, because there's now two, two chat systems. Um, and you'll see one in the, the Hangout itself and one where other people are talking. 
Yeah. And people were people were talking about me in the last ones. They were saying Rob's not even inter listening to us. One guy said, and I'm sure they're running two different tra chats, trying to interview people, and so it's, it's not easy, Adrian, oh, but but it's powerful. Do you do this on your own, or do you have someone helping? Kinda, kinda. You you asked them, you know about you know um, help. Um, Moderating, that's just something I usually ask the first person there to help me with. And okay. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. By the way, I have had a technical glitch with every single community I've ever done. Knock on one, maybe the exception of, of this one, because um, this seems to be working fine. But something always go wrong, goes wrong. I usually just say that in the beginning. I say, look, everybody, if I drop out, just keep talking, because it happens. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, it's challenged. And I've also had a number of public you know, highly visible embarrassments and misfires. One didn't work at all, and we ended up turning that into a private um, uh, community chat, which ended up being really good as well. But you know, yeah, things go wrong all the time. Just count on them. Just expect them. And yeah, then... but it's it's kind of like it's Google. Just it seems evolving. It seems new. You know, I have not encountered anyone who says I know everything there is to know about Google, and I'm an expert. Oh, I have. <laughs> Just take that for what it's worth, um, because they're changing so much that even if you thought you knew it yesterday, it's it's different. Um, and there's no right way to use it, by the way. Uh, okay. There's no wrong way to use it. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if we had a long thread where I actually let my hair down and let some of my opinions out. I don't think there's necessarily a right way to use it either. There's some real challenges. For, for small businesses using this, for Google Plus pages, primarily the time involved. It is a time sink, and we all have to get figure out how to get that under control. Okay. But there's, it, there's small business challenges in this. Is it as fun as it looks? <laughs> Does it look fun? <laughs> it's fun sometimes. I love some of the people I've met. I've met people I know will be real life friends for life. Yeah. Um, real world friends for life. But yeah, yeah, it's fun, and sometimes it's. Frustrating and aggravating and all the other horrible things. It's both. So it's a mixed bag. You, you have been incredibly helpful. I I think that you have sufficiently scared me. <laughs> but I'm curious if you were to like give someone advice. If you now knowing what you know now about how this has evolved and what you do, what what are what is some advice that you would share with someone who was silly enough to think that maybe they wanted to start a community on Google Plus. Well, let me let me um, answer a question you didn't ask. I get asked a lot about follower count. I've got I think fifty thousand almost now, maybe in the next day or two, all fifty thousand. Um, don't even pay attention to that. Go, go for go for relationships instead. Um, you know, just go slow on that. Um, Find people you like and start interacting with that. The, the the follower count thing is a sucker's game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, first of all, follower follower count doesn't mean people are actually following you. They might have you buried in some circle someplace. So I wanted to get that one out of the way. As, as far as starting your own community, first and foremost, know that you really want to do it. Um, it takes only two minutes to set up a community. It's trivial. But the, the problem is, do you really want to be posting? Do you really want to be recruiting people for that? <clears throat> and I mentioned the conceptual problem that, that um, Google has with communities. I believe they know about it. I don't yeah. know if they care, and I think they probably care. But um, you know, th there's overlapping topics now. There's a lot of them. There's probably a dozen entrepreneur communities, at least. Mm -hmm. um, I was a little bit interested in crowdfunding. So if you want to post, if I want to post about crowdfunding, where do I do it? There's, there's a dozen communities about that. Um, I could post to each one of those communities, and then I'm going to get the community mo moderators mad at me because nobody likes cross-posting. Um, do I post to my own profile? There's no right answers. I said there's no wrong answers, but there's also no right answers. Right. That's a little bit negative maybe, but it's just something to, to know. You know, Once again, we go to the world with the social network we have, not the one we right. like. Right. Okay. So go for relationships is my thing. Make friends. You know, I, I'm, that's I can't give any better advice than that, really. Okay. Um, wow. And so, anything else that you would a follower count is not you know know if you really want to do it if you want to be posting and recruiting making friends. What else would you, what else would you tell yourself or how would you know if you were to go back and say this was great or don't do it you know what would you, what would you tell yourself? You mean if I was going to start all over on Google Plus? Um, you know, I, I thought about that a little bit. Um, 
and I, I post edgy material um, to my own profile. It's kind of, I, I do, and I push the envelope sometimes. It's just the way I am. I like having fun. Sometimes people get mad at me. Sometimes people get extremely mad at me. Um, I think I probably wouldn't do that again. I, I saw a, a very high-level Google employee talking about um, the, the perfect you know, profile, and he used somebody as an example who was on their suggested users list, which seems kind of self-referential to me. But, um, you know, it was kind of the, what they're probably using is their algorithm to decide if you're a good poster or not, which is, you know, 20% things about your own life, uh, you know, 20% interesting news articles, 20% shares of other people's material, do some time interacting on other people's posts and sometimes on your own. Google, I'm sure their algorithm has some kind of ideal person in mind, and I'm not that person. I'm not going to change my behavior because of it. But I would probably be more mindful of the culture I'm in. Every, um, every social network has its own culture. What you can post on Tumblr is not what you can post on Google+, Plus, obviously. Right. Um, so, you know, and I am mindful of the culture, but I would be probably a little more mindful of the culture and do my own stuff somewhere else, maybe on, maybe on my own blog or something. But um, I don't know if that's the answer you wanted to hear. Um, no, it's kind of a capitulation a little bit. No, no, the answer I wanted to hear is exactly what you gave me, and I, I didn't know what you were going to say. I mean, there's no, like I said, it's just... Based on your experience, what would you do differently? And I, I think that that's, if that is your answer, that's absolutely valid. Well, what I do the same as, as, as more hangouts, more meet, meeting people like you, like this. And as we talked um, you know, before this interview, I would love you to start interviewing more people in the entrepreneurs community. I would love this to be a regular feature. Um, I will help you promote them however I can. I think it's, it's great because people aren't good at talking about themselves. I'm probably a horrible interview subject because I'll ramble on for hours on things. But, but um, you know, bringing entrepreneurs out of their shell, that's just a really, really good thing. Hangouts is an awesome technology. Uh, Hangouts on air is awesome. So if you can do this more, I'd, I'd be happy to help you. I think it's great. Okay. Yeah, um, and I, yeah, I, I have some ideas around that, and, and maybe we can talk further about that um, at another time. But um, this, I I'm I'm interested and I'm intrigued by people. So I, you know, I saw it was something interesting that you were doing. I love the fact that you were approachable and willing to come talk to me. And I, you know, you you've given me a lot of food for thought. Because um, I was literally in, a, in another hangout with another entrepreneur, and we were like, you know, it'd be cool. We should do this, 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 this. And I, we were talking. I was like, you know, who I need to go talk to. <laughs> I need to go talk to that guy that's got that community going. Because if you know, if it was you know the best thing you've ever done or hell on two wheels, you would know because you've been doing it and you're you seem to be doing it very well. So, thank you. Well, thank you so much, Adrian. I, I totally enjoyed this. Uh, like I said, it's my first interview of my life. How did I do? I know. Like I said, I, you did fantastic. You did fantastic. I, I, I think that um, you, you've given me the information that I, that I needed to, to, really, to go think about this. Um, and uh, I, I hope this was fun for you. I hope this was useful for you in some way as well. I, I, I totally enjoyed this. So, so shall we end the broadcast now? Let's do that. Okay, thank, thank you. you. You take the last word, okay? I'm going to end it after you talk. Um, I just want to say this was fun. Thank you so much.